Baldur's Gate 3 is a massive adventure. This expansive RPG allows you to try out all sorts of creative choices both during combat and as you explore the world. Though the game does provide some helpful tooltips, it can't cover everything you can do. But we've got you covered. Here's 20 things Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't tell you. When making a character, know that you'll be able to have complete control over all your party members, even in dialogue and social interactions if you choose. So don't get too hung up on making a jack-of-all-trades, your party members will balance you out. Eventually, you can change your class, abilities, and some of your skill proficiencies later on. You'll even be able to respec whoever you recruit to your party, including origin characters and hirelings. All it costs is 100 gold after you find Withers in the Dank Crypt. When escaping the Nautiloid, the final battle will involve the Mind Flayer battling Commander Zalk. You're meant to take down the weaker enemies, but also bypass this battle and run straight for the Nautiloid controls. As it turns out, you can actually help the Mind Flayer take down Commander Zalk, and once you've done this, you can claim his Fire Sword, the Everburn Blade. It's an incredible starting weapon that will serve you well in your early adventures. Only characters who are proficient with two-handed greatswords will be able to equip this item, but as an uncommon weapon, it does heftier slashing damage with additional fire damage. And if your party cannot wield the Everburn Blade, it still sells for a good chunk of gold. From the moment you escape the Nautiloid and land on the beach, you will have access to your camp, which you can access by going to your map screen. To leave your camp, you can teleport to any of the fast travel nodes you've unlocked, or you can just select Leave Camp, which puts you right back to where you were before going to your camp. Utilize your short rest to heal or regain ability uses. When hovering over your abilities, you'll see which ones require a short rest to be able to use again. So make sure to use these short rests in between battles to heal up and get those abilities back. You'll have two free short rests to use before you'll need to long rest. Long resting replenishes every ability whether they require a short or long rest and replenishes your two short rests. Your party maxes out at four members, but newer potential party members can be sent to your camp should you want to change them out or if one should die and need replacing. To replace a party member, travel to your camp and talk to one of the members that's currently in your party. They should have a dialogue option telling them to stay at camp. Then chat with the party member that you want to adventure with and ask them to join. Your hotbar can quickly become a messy, unorganized smattering of spells, abilities, and items, but don't fret, there are a few ways to keep things more organized. With mouse and keyboard, the hotbar has a couple options on the right. Click the plus or minus sign to add more rows, allowing you to see more spells at once without needing to use the sliders as often. Above the plus and minus buttons is a lock key, which you can click to unlock your hotbar. Doing this allows you to move your spells and items around to how you see fit, or even remove some of the ones you don't use. You can also press K to open your spellbook to see what spells you currently have access to. If you're playing with a controller, it's essentially the same thing, but with radial wheels. You can add radial wheels and move the spells and items around to your liking. Make sure to spend some time outside of battle to get everything looking good and organized, that way battles can go a bit smoother. Auto-saving happens fairly frequently, but it never seems to happen when you need it to, so make sure to manually save often. Not only will this prevent you from losing a bunch of progress if your party dies, but it can also be manipulated into getting outcomes you'd prefer. Have a big decision ahead of you? Manually save before you go into the conversation. That way you can reload if the dice betray you. Do your dice rolls seem to switch their luck often? You might have karmic dice toggled on. This is an optional setting that bends the randomness in dice rolls, both for you and for your enemies as well. In other words, you could be getting hit more often in combat because of karmic dice attempting to mitigate streaks of bad luck. If you would rather test your luck in Baldur's Gate 3 without any behind-the-scenes adjustments, the good news is that karmic dice is entirely optional. Toggle this setting on or off in the options. When faced with a challenge, you should take advantage of your party member's strengths and choose which character you'd like to attempt the action or dice roll. Only the character you're controlling or the character that is present during an interaction will be allowed to make skill checks and ability rolls. For example, rogues have high dexterity and the best skills to successfully pick a lock. What you got it open? 
just like that. Or if you have a party member with the guidance cantrip, be sure to cast it on the character right before they attempt the interaction to give them an additional bonus to their roll. And if you fail a passive perception roll, have your other party members walk by the area to attempt the roll. There's always a chance one of your characters will succeed. Hmm. What's that? Spell slots are an important aspect of the action economy. Have your mages prioritize using cantrips for weaker enemies or battles and save their spell slots for tougher enemies or larger battles when the odds are against you. Be careful of equipping gear that you're not proficient with. Lacking proficiency will give you disadvantage whenever you take certain actions like sneaking or attacking, which makes you more likely to fail. When on your character sheet, hovering over a piece of equipment will tell you if that character is proficient or not. Initiating turn-based mode while outside of combat can help quite a bit when trying to get a jump on your enemy. This mode pauses time and allows you to take your action, bonus action, and movement as if you were in a round of combat. Turn-based mode is also helpful if you're trying to catch a conversation with a fast-moving rat or squirrel. Sometimes critters in the wild will give you helpful information, while other times, they're useless. But that's just part of the fun. You can toggle non-lethal damage in your passive tabs if you're ever attacked by an enemy that you may not want to kill due to a misunderstanding or simply due to your character's personal code. Keep in mind that most spells and ranged attacks are still lethal, so these apply mostly to melee attacks. Go wild with cantrips and ritual spells outside of combat. You won't be spending a spell slot with these types of spells, so don't worry if you've used all your level spell slots. Firebolt can be handy for lighting braziers hanging from the ceiling, and if you're out of lockpicks, try casting Eldritch Blast to break down doors. Some ritual spells have an effect that lasts until your next long rest. Cast Longstrider to give you and your allies extra movement all day. Other spells like Speak with Animals or Speak with Dead also last all day, and you can recast the spell on another animal or a corpse until your next long rest. If you click on something and it's locked or doesn't react, right-click on it for additional options of what you can do. Additionally, make sure you're controlling the best person for that job. For example, if a Starian is in your party, use him to pick locks as he gets a few bonuses for doing so. Add items to your wares to quickly sell at a vendor. Use left shift to select adjacent items or left control to select items individually, then right-click and select add to wares. When you're in the trade and barter menu at the vendor, toggle to trade and select sell wares at the bottom. You'll even get a warning if the vendor can't afford to buy all of the items you've selected for wares. You can use the same process to manage your inventory by selecting send to camp and the items will go to your traveler's chest in camp. Equipping or swapping a weapon in battle counts as an action, so make sure to head into battle with all the correct gear equipped. That way you're not wasting turns swapping things out. Also, if you have a character that can summon a familiar or mage hand, be sure to do that just before entering a fight. Not only will they be there from the beginning, but it'll also save you a turn once in combat. Opening and closing doors while in combat is a free action that should be utilized often to break enemies' line of sight. If you're near a door and have a couple of ranged enemies that don't want to leave their post, take your shots at them and then close the door. This will force the enemy to either make their way towards you since they can no longer see you, or if they don't want to move, they might even just end their turn early. Closing doors is also great for going into hiding since once again their line of sight will be broken. When near an object in the world, you can actually pick it up and move it a certain distance if your character is strong enough to lift it. This can be particularly useful when stacking crates to jump to higher areas in a room or moving them out of the way to uncover secret spots. You can also use a strong character to move heavy rocks to find hidden treasure. Soul coins are items used to power infernal engines. If you have Karlock in your party, she will be especially interested in finding these items. One cool feature to help you in your search is that soul coins found in the wild are accompanied by some evil sounding chanting. So keep your eyes peeled when you hear it. You can also use alt to highlight lootable objects in your vicinity. 
For more on Baldur's Gate 3, don't miss our in-depth tips and tricks and our ever-growing wiki guide. For everything else video games, stick with IGN.